WA Boot Campers. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another virtual session. I hope you're enjoying the, the boot camp so far. Welcome to my session, which is Write the Vision in the New Paradigm. I'm Stacey Evans Morgan, and I'll be navigating through this, through this session and um, hope you find it informative as we talk about writing in the new paradigm. And let's just take a moment for 2020. That's part of the paradigm shift right there that we're going to be talking about. So uh, welcome, take notes. I've got PowerPoints. I've got stuff to hopefully keep this uh, engaging and uh, informative and maybe a little entertaining too. I don't know, but let's get right into it. So we're talking about writing in the new paradigm, writing the vision. Uh, I'm going to share a couple of slides with you and we can go through this together. There we go. Move that up a little bit. So write the vision, write it in the new paradigm is what I'm calling this session because um, first of all, that's what I do. I am a television writer and producer and I'll get into that. But um, I hope that you find this inspirational in this time of pandemic and in this uh, record breaking time of animation coming out of the woodworks. But it all begins with the written word. Let's just talk about that. It all begins with the written word, okay? So an artist can create a compelling character, but the writer creates the journey that character will take, okay? So you as writers or, you know, you, you, you've created a character and maybe you wanna, now you wanna write with it. The power is in the pen. An artist creates a compelling character, but the writer creates the journey that character will take. So actors, directors, storyboard artists, animators, the entire production crew, they all take their cue from the written word. So it all starts with the word, right? So let's talk about writing in the year 2020. Crazy, right? This unprecedented year of pandemic and epidemic of uh, civil injustice and all kinds of craziness going on. But listen, writers have an obligation to tell their stories and to write his or her story as it is happening for posterity's sake. Future generations are gonna, they're gonna study society by the way we write. They're, they're gonna look at our written word and, and ask, what were you guys doing back then? So we as writers, we must chronicle our events as they are happening. So writing your books, your scripts, your poetry, your songs, your essays, your short stories, now is the time like never before. So for some of you, that might mean a reinvention, reinventing yourself as a writer. And when you do that, you can open doors that you've never imagined, right? Talents will make room for you. There's an old scripture that says that, that your talents and that your gifts will make room for you and bring you before great men and women. So I want you to get out of the comfort zone and get out of your own way. That's what I had to do, reinventing myself. So for me, the definition of reinventing myself as a writer meant a shift in my personal paradigm, expanding my creative portfolio, getting out of my comfort zone, my comfort zone of knowing that I have written for over 25 years uh, in one genre. So that was my comfort zone. Um, embracing the blessing that after all these years, I still get to get the chance to do what I love. Um, and learning the importance of networking with other writers outside of my genre and, and, and those doors that could open through that networking, that network of writers, right? So the last thing is for me, I had to learn to not despise my humble beginnings, right? So I started, well, I mean, you know, this is a nice start. I mean, I, I, I came into the game um, as a struggling writer, <laughs> as an aspiring TV writer and, um, the door is open for me. I, I went through a lot of challenges to get there, but I persevered and that's what it takes is perseverance. Uh, so I'm going to just kind of fast forward to my career 
once the doors opened for me as a staff writer. And I got the job working on the show, The Parkers. At the time, it was just the spinoff for the TV show Moesha. Um, I don't know if you know that show, but starring Brandy. And um, the exec one of the executive producers of the show, Sarah Finney, she ended up becoming my mentor. And when the opportunity opened up for this new spinoff, um, I got the chance to get staffed on that show. And I came on board as a staff writer. I went from staff writer to five seasons later, I elevated all the way up to producer level writer. Really proud of that. Um, I've had the opportunity to write for the TV show, The Jamie Foxx Show. I wrote for another show called One on One, which you'll see down here, uh, right here, One on One. And I kind of put both of these up here because the Parkers and One on One are both on Netflix now. So that's a little fun fact. And so, you know, I had a great experience and opportunity writing on these hit TV shows. Okay, then, you know, I kind of made a shift. I made a shift in my own paradigm. I went from sitcom writing to live award shows. So let me just move this over. Just make sure you can see it. Okay, um, live award shows. Starting in 2005, I wrote for the NAACP Image Awards. Had never written for a live show, um, but I, I just kind of decided I'm a writer so I can write this. And I had the opportunity and I ended up coming on board writing um, opening segments and introductions to then Senator Barack Obama, who became the future, our future president, uh, Barack Obama for Oprah Winfrey, for Prince. And that just really challenged me as a writer to just take my writing to another level, right? But then I got another opportunity to write for a live show. In 2016, I wrote for the Democratic National Convention. I wrote a live um, online show that was running kind of during the convention in 2016. And so then, I, I mean, I never imagined myself as a political writer, but here I am, I'm in that arena. So. So right after that, I ended up joining up with a network group of writers called BWB. And BWB basically stands for Black Women Who Brunch. And this group was started by uh, Lena Waithe and, and Ketchy Carroll and um, Erica, Erica Johnson. And it started off just as a gathering of like-minded writers, women, Black women writers who had written for television shows. That was the criteria that you had to have been staffed on a TV show. So I ended up writing, I mean, I ended up joining this group and we would get together for quarterly meetups and just do like potluck brunch and things of that sort. Well, that small group of women that gathered in a living room grew to what you see here on the screen. This is really just, this is 62 women, which is really just a percentage of, of how exponentially the group has grown over the years, right? And so word got out and Hollywood Reporter decided that they wanted to do a two-page spread on us, a story on us, uh, on our group. And kind of a tongue-in-cheek uh, title, we can't find any more Black female writers because that's a thing that you hear in the industry. So they kind of put this little subtitle, here are 62 scribes in one photo. So you can't say that you can't find any, any black female writers. If it's not us, perhaps it's one of the women, um, maybe one of the women in this picture, maybe they know a writer. So anyway, so I'm in this group and one of the writers happens to get a call from someone at DreamWorks, DreamWorks Animation to be exact. Um, and she basically saw the article in Hollywood Reporter and decided to reach out to this particular writer to just kind of inquire to see if there were any black female writers that might be interested in writing for a new animated series for DreamWorks. And so I decided I'm interested, you know, I just kind of just tapped into my own faith and just said, you know, I'm going to go for it. And so I ended up um, submitting for the show, right? That meant I had to expand my creative portfolio. 
I had been like, like I said, I had been working as a writer in half hour. Um, but that gave me the confidence to pursue animation because I understand story structure. I understand my job as a writer is to ultimately uh, take the viewer on the journey, right? So um, I decided to go for it. And before I show you that, so the thing is I had never written animation. So I was like, what sample am I going to show them? So I had written an original sitcom that was kind of, it was a family friendly sitcom. And I had written a children's book. I don't know if you can, hopefully it's not too glary. Children's book, my first children's book, Coco Princess. So I was like, you know, I can, I can write for the younger audience and I definitely can write something that's family friendly. So I had my manager submit that, the, the script and um, Coco Princess and they read it and they liked it. They weren't necessarily looking to read an animated, an animated sample. So those two items really helped open the door for me. So as you can see here, Coco Princess led to me writing for the DreamWorks animation series, Madagascar, a little wild. That's crazy, that's wild to me. Um, it's currently running on Hulu and Peacock and you know, just really broadened my horizons as a writer. So, you know, animation is definitely where it's at for me. I'm loving that. So I wanna show you before we go any further, let me stop this for a second. And I am going to put up the trailer so you can actually see it. It's not from my episode, but I'm going to let you see what they have cooking up because it's really adorable. Places, everybody. <laughs> Before Madagascar, the zoo crew you love That's right. was looking for adventure. Let's have some serious fun. We'll be back at the zoo before the sun goes down. Let's do this. You still haven't washed. <laughs> to the travel tunnels we go. <laughs> Join your favorite friends, Alex, oh, Gloria, Melman, awesome. and Marty. Huh? <sighs> As they discover life Whoa. on the outside. Together, we can do anything. <laughs> Guess I should have seen that coming. Madagascar, a little wild, September 7th on Hulu. That was cute, right? Who doesn't love those four friends? I love those four friends in the movie. And then they came up with this TV show about the four friends as babies, as young animals when they first arrived to New York and at the zoo where they are and the adventures that they go on in New York City and everything like that. Just, I fell in love with it when they pitched it to me. So I was honored when they invited me to come to a story forum. A story forum is where um, they'll invite a select group of writers and we just get together and get in the room and start pitching. It's um, a little bit different than being on staff, like a staff writer where you're hired and you just come together. They kind of hire freelance writers to come together as a team. And so we all came together and we pitched stories and it was just really fun and just kind of expanding your mind and, and using your imagination and, you know, just understanding the world of Madagascar. You know, these are talking animals. So basically they are rules. So do these animals talk? Do humans understand them? You know, you, once you understood what the rules were that, no, humans do not hear them talking, but they can kind of understand them. Do they see them when they get outside of the zoo? Do they recognize that there are these animals who, who maybe escaped from the zoo? No, if they put on some glasses, now they are blended in with everyone else. So once you understand those rules, the sky's the limit in your storytelling. So that was really fun to expand. So I'm gonna go back to the slides and pick up where we left off. And so you saw the trailer, I hope you enjoyed that. So the new paradigm, let's talk about the new paradigm. So the new paradigm really goes beyond network and cable TV, right? There are streaming services that are 
um, increasing the demand for animated contact, I mean, content, excuse me. Uh, there's HBO Max, there's Disney Plus, there's uh, Apple Plus, there's Netflix, there's Peacock, there's Hulu and other 24 hour outlets. So basically there's an explosion of places to pitch ideas and, and just opportunities that are opening up for people who work in animation and different types of animation. There's a lot more shows that are being greenlit, which is, you know, the industry term for when a show is given the go ahead to move forward. So there are a lot more shows being greenlit and going to production faster to remain competitive. There's um, second and third seasons that are coming faster with the trend of binge watching. So, you know, for all of us who like to watch all 60 episodes or want to watch the whole first season all in one sitting or over a weekend, that creates a new problem because they got to keep replenishing that shelf, that top shelf. So they got to bring these new seasons, um, you know, to fruition. So the traditional format of a network ordering 26 or 52 um, episodes that's kind of passe now. Streaming and on-demand services, they don't stick to that. They don't stick to that type of storytelling. They, If they want to order 80 episodes or 100 episodes or 45 episodes, they can order how many they want. You know, they, they make up their own rules. Uh, the same goes with the app-based programming that adds another level like Facebook TV or YouTube or things of that sort. So it's a whole different ball game. All right. So again, with the new paradigm, let me just move this down just a little bit. Okay. So basically now it's, it's asking you as the writer, what's the best format for you to tell your story? Okay. Platforms are increasingly global. Um, you know, now they're producing shows in different languages um, with the ability to speak to global audiences. Um, diversity and, and representation and characters and narratives are presenting themselves. The opportunities to do that for those characters are presenting themselves like never before, which is a beautiful thing. So then there's a shift during a pandemic. Animation has actually proven to be COVID friendly. It's a COVID friendly type of production. Um, it's kind of the new studio culture. Uh, no longer are, you know, well, well, on some productions, you know, people are still wearing these or whatever, but working in, working in animation, there's no such thing. You know, creatives can work seamlessly and remotely. Uh, writers, animators, actors, they can all work from where they are from home in any part of the world and get the job done. So um, I kind of feel like even in a post-COVID uh, environment, in a post-COVID world, the idea of creatives housed in one location, it could be a thing of the past. I don't think it's, obviously it's not gonna go away, but I think it's definitely gonna be modified. So you could be working in, you know, Texas or working in New York or working in LA and someone's working in London and they just pull it all together and make it happen. So it's kind of an exciting time during the pandemic. So you even have like, you know, the live action world trying to come over to animation um, like never before. You have big name celebrities, you have showrunners who are now open to the world of animation because it's work that they can do right now. They can call in and um, do their parts and things of that sort. So it's really exciting. My niece is working on a show for Disney and the actors, basically they all do their sessions from home. The animators are in another location and they're doing their thing. And the writers are all meeting on Zoom. That is the new norm for writers rooms, whether it's live action, whether it's, um, uh, drama, comedy, animation, writers are now taking advantage of this whole Zoom phenomenon and that's how we're getting the work done. So you've written your script. So you need to understand that your script is a complete blueprint to the episode that you're writing, okay? So in animation, in cartoon scripts, 
the writer basically lays out every detail of the story. That was one thing that I really had to learn um, in writing animation was that everything from movement to what the characters are wearing to the background to the location has to be written in detail. Again, you have the power of the pen. Uh, you know, on some shows, characters have a certain number of outfits to work with. Um, you have to know how to keep locations to a minimum. So you have to write all of these types of things, how she snaps her finger, how she whisks herself in the room or how he, I don't know, how he's shuffling off and whistling. You have to write all of that because they're, the artists are going to take what you've literally written and they're going to animate that. They're going to bring that to life. So um, I like to say that nothing should be left up to the imagination of other creatives until you have put your full vision, your imagination, your idea on page. You're telling the artist basically what you want them to see, execute, then the creative team can take over from there. They'll build upon it. They'll build on your initial vision by punching up, punching up jokes, adding additional gags, uh, maybe sight gags or uh, music or sound effects or things of that sort. But you are in charge of that initial vision. So the writer is very important. So now you need to know the audience that you're writing for. So those of you who, you know, are trying to dip your toe in the animation writing pool, you need to know, you know, is preschool your thing? Do you have a knack for writing for those younger um, viewers, age three to five? That's the preschool uh, uh, demographic. Then there's the children, children, which is age, just age six to 11 and older if you're, you know, your big kid. And then ultimately there's adults. So there's adult animation, which is for adults. I mean, there's some adult animation that's for teenagers, preteens can watch it too. And then there's some adult animation that's strictly prime time, late night, adult swim, put the kids to bed. So you need to know the audience that you're writing for. There are different types of animation writing. So there's the preschool, there's children, there's adult, there's sci-fi, there's action comedy, there's comedy, there's anime, all kinds of writing uh, opportunities for uh, animation. Another thing you wanna do is you want to watch what you want to write. So you're trying to break in, you, you know, as an animation writer, you need to start watching a lot, a lot of programming in the genre that you want to write. Um, you know, do you want to write uh, Steven Universe? Then you're going to have to watch a lot of Steven Universe. You want to watch Craig of the Creek, you're going to be watching a lot of Craig of the Creek. Um, you want to watch, uh, you want to write for preschool, start watching a lot of the younger, like maybe PBS Kids or, um, you know, some of the Disney Junior, the Disney Plus stuff. Um, so you want to get familiar, basically. You want to get familiar with their lingo, with what those audiences expect, all right? Another thing that I like to encourage writers to do is dissecting episodes. So whatever that show is, or say it's you want to write for Harley Quinn or something like that, start watching episodes and dissect them. Okay, go scene by scene and watch and write what happens. Just kind of write down what's happening in the sequence, in the order. Um, and then you'll find yourself learning how to get into the rhythm of that particular show. You want to listen to your soul and write. So you're here, you're at BWA boot camp, it's virtual, you're at home, you're being inspired. And um, the idea, you have an idea maybe for an original uh, idea, a, a original show, or you just have your heart set on writing for Cartoon Network or for uh, Nickelodeon. If that idea, if that creative idea basically tucks you in at night and snatches the covers off of you in the morning, it's meant for you to write the vision. It's meant for you to do it. So write the vision and listen to the characters. Listen to those characters because they're going to they're gonna tell you a lot. So after your final draft, okay, so now you've written your final draft of a script, whether it's a spec script, and we'll talk about that in a minute, or something original. The creative process of bringing your, 
written vision to life begins. There's storyboarding, there's the layout, there's casting, there's the animatics, which is the, the rough draft of what the final animation is gonna look like. There's music, there's photography, et cetera. So there's a lot that goes into um, animation after the writer is, has uh, put their magic on it, okay? So we talked about, I mentioned spec scripts. A spec script is basically a script or a specul speculative script that is written with the slim possibility of being optioned, sold, and produced. So in television, a spec script is a writer's sample of one's ability, basically, to write and capture the essence of an existing show or an original project. So basically you're writing it with the goal of either getting staffed on a show or maybe accepted into a writer's program. And some of the writer's programs that are out there, there, there are a few, there, there are programs that are popping up, but the popular ones are obviously, um, there's the Nickelodeon animation program. There's Universal Animation Writers Program. I think Warner Brothers um, is opening up their writers program to animate animation as well. They have drama, they have a drama track and they have comedy track, but I think they are going to be opening up to um, animation as well. But you can do your research. There's a lot of programs out there. And these programs are designed to help you as a writer um, let me stop sharing for a second so you can see. To help you as a writer, maybe get staffed on a show um, to, you know, basically grow as an animation writer. They're these programs were designed to hopefully diversify um, the, the writers that are out there, okay? To give opportunity to writers of color, to marginalized writers, to writers of, you know, maybe who are older writers or what have you, to give you, give that opportunity. And so that's why they've created these programs. And so usually if you get in, it's maybe six months to a year uh, of a commitment, but they're really wonderful. So here are some of, this is for Nickelodeon's um, 2020 program. These were the accepted scripts that they're accepting. So let's, so you see on the list, there's American Dad, there's Atlanta, there's Blackish, there's Bob's Burger. Let's go on down here to Family Reunion. You've got Grownish, you've got even Insecure. Uh, over here, you've got Rick and Morty, you've got Raven's Home, uh, South Park, um, on down, The Last OG, all different types of comedies and half hour shows, not necessarily animation. They just wanna see that you can write, they wanna see your ability. So this is the accepted list that they, so you would need to, as a writer, you would need to pick one of these, Big Mouth, Mom, Rick and Morty, the Goldbergs. You would need to pick one of these and you would need to know those shows like you know your name, okay? So if you're gonna write one of these shows, you need to know everything about that show, everything about those characters, the stories that have been written already, what seasons they're in, you need to know. And your script needs to look exactly like one of these shows, okay? So that's what they're gonna be looking at. So if you are thinking about applying to one of the writer's programs, you need to start thinking about what spec scripts you want to have in your arsenal. And some of the programs also want you to write an original, so it depends. So this is again, for example, for the Nickelodeon. So they want you to pick a track. There's two tracks in their program. So this is the general track, which basically offers emerging television writers from around the world, a paid opportunity to develop their craft and launch their careers. It's amazing opportunity, right? right? So while in the program, writers hone their skills, build a professional network and gain real world experience in writer's room for our critically acclaimed live action and animated shows. So the general track is a full-time commitment for up to one year. Your submission must include a spec script. So you're gonna pick uh, one of those scripts from the list that we just saw. Um, based on a show from the, the list um, and and an original comedy pilot. So Nickelodeon, that's what they want. They want they want a spec and then they want an original 
pilot. So the preschool track, let's go over here. Remember, that's the three to five age audience that you're going to be writing for. If you're interested in writing um, for an audience who's smart, funny, and likes to laugh and play, this is the opportunity for you. So the preschool track offers talent development opportunities with a focus on Nick Jr. content. So the preschool track is a full-time six-month commitment. General track is one year, preschool track is a six-month six month, uh, submission, uh, commitment, I'm sorry. So your submission must include a spec script based on the show from that accepted list. Also, they want an original pilot as well. So you, you need to build your arsenal right now with a solid spec script and a really, really, really good original pilot as well. Those are going to be your calling cards, whether you're trying to get into a program or you're trying to get an agent or what have you, you need to have that. But here's the thing that I want to encourage you. Okay, your creativity is safe, especially in this time of pandemic. Your creativity is safe. Writers will never be replaced by robots. So, you know, think about it. Books, songs, scripts, they cannot be written by artificial intelligence. That's a good thing for you. Uh, you can't escape the call of a writer. You just can't. You just have to accept it. And um, credits and bylines, this is really important. Credits and bylines, they don't define you. They don't define you as a writer. If you are a writer, you need to say you are a writer. Um, I used to teach a workshop and before the workshop began, I used to say, how many aspiring writers do we have in the room? And hands would go up and I'd say, you guys are in the wrong room. And they'd look around like, oh my God, I signed up for the wrong workshop. And what I meant by that was, um, I was looking for a room of writers, people who already proclaim themselves to be writers, not aspiring writers. Uh, a credit on TV does not make you a writer. A byline or, uh, you know, your a book uh, written by on a book does not make you a writer. You are a writer, therefore you write. So, you know, embrace that title that you are a writer, okay? And I want you to listen to your soul, listen to your soul and write. So again, what I said before, if that idea tucks you in at night and then it snatches the covers off of you in the morning, it is meant for you to write it, okay? That tugging at your heart, don't, don't ignore it. Write the vision and listen to your characters. For some writers, this time of pandemic, it will be a defining moment, it will. I mean, think about it. Shakespeare wrote three of his famous tragedies during turbulent times, during the plague, during pandemic. He wrote King Lear, Macbeth, Anthony and Cleopatra. What will you write? What are you gonna write during this time? So I want you to just take that leap of faith and go for it. I want you to stay connected with me via social media. If you, you know, just want to stay connected, want to network or just want to, you know, find out what I'm up to. Um, I have upcoming writers workshops going on throughout the year. Um, I usually do them quarterly. So this is a good way to stay in touch with me. So I'm on Facebook at 2SE Morgan. Um, I'm on Stacey Evans uh, on any other platform, I'm Stacey Evans Morgan, my public page on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on, uh, you know, Instagram, Stacey Evans Morgan, and stay in touch with me. And, and um, let me take this off. So I hope you were inspired. And, and as a writer, I want to encourage you a couple of things I want you to have in your arsenal. So like I said, I had this a script and I had a children's book. And that kind of opened the door for me uh, to get in the animation world. For you, it may be a different journey, but I want you to just keep one of these, keep your journal and write. So for those of you who are, who are artists and you're creating these characters, now start writing some storylines to go for those characters. Keep your journal and just write the ideas. If you have an idea about um, uh, the sneaker crew, so sneakers, you want to you want to write about uh, uh, you know some friends who are all sneakers, sneakers who talk. That's not a crazy idea. Write the vision, okay? Who would have thought that uh, a cartoon about a sponge that wears pants 
would become such a phenomenon. But, you know, they did, and it is. So, uh, you know, some talking sneakers is not too far-fetched, right? So write that vision, okay? And stay encouraged. There's a little book that I want you to get to. It's called The Art of War. And I'm not being paid to endorse this, but this book is so important to me as a creator. It's kind of glary. Let me go back here. Okay, so The Art of War by Stephen Pressfield. Break through the blocks and win your inner creative battles. You can thank me later. This is a good one. So that's it. I hope you were inspired. Um, you know, you're going to be networking, you know, with other writers. Try to get into some writing groups. Animation is winning right now. So the opportunities, they are looking for you. They are looking for, especially for Black female writers and, and writers of color. They are looking for you to tell stories, to come in and help them tell stories, to give, you know, different perspectives. So this is an absolutely wonderful time to be a writer and especially a writer in animation. So start working on those scripts, apply to those programs. I look forward to seeing whatever it is that you're gonna be creating. So write the vision and stay encouraged. Bye.